Hi guys, how's it all going? Godzilla here, how is doing? Just going to show off my uh, button box and display box that I've got going and that we're using the Arduino products and that and took a lot of learning and that for myself and teaching an old dog new tricks and that how to use Arduino products which I've never done before um, and even had to go to the extent of purchasing a 3D printer and learning um, free CAD program and the Creality uh, slices and all that sort of stuff um, not to mention all the scripting work using DCS BIOS and um, all the different different things and um, systems that needed to get this working but even had to do a bit of woodworking that I hadn't done uh, for over 30 odd years so anyway let's have a look at this box so as you can see I've got a lot of uh, two pos switches three pos switches I've got some encoders I've got some potential meters, got some push buttons, got the numpad, got a couple of displays. Now, sorry about the brightness of those two main displays there. You probably won't be able to see. I've tried a few different ways on trying to see if I could record what is actually on those screens. The brightness is just, I just can't seem to fix that. And then we got um, some more switches, buttons, and knobs. So as you can see on the, I've tried to mimic it as the for the F18 as close to what's in the cockpit. So on the left hand side, you've got your flaps, hooks, your position lights, um, which are all down the left hand side console. Then I've got some of your displays there, so your DDIs, your AMPCD, and your OBOGs, which are, again, apart from the display sort of thing, are down generally the left-hand side of the, the cockpit. Over on the right-hand side, I've got the generators and the batteries, your console lights, the testings, your FLIR switches, and your radar and INS alignments, which, again, are all down the right-hand side of the cockpit. And then in the up front controller, similar to what's in the F18, uh, we've got the comms one and comms two displays. We've got a numpad there, a scratch pad, and the um, the main UFC display with the five selected knobs. Underneath that, we've got again the what's in the UFC or your autopilot right through to your on-off switches, and then in the bottom switches, just some key um, again knobs and things that we needed such as the comms one and comms two um, displays, uh, sorry, channel select switch, your heading and core selection switches, your HMD, your altimeter settings and your proximity radar settings um, all in the center there. And what I'll do, I'll just show you the box before we go and do a quick test of all these. See the box. We can open it up just with the hinge that I've put along the bottom there so we can get to everything nice and easy. I've got two Arduino boards, one there and one over there. And unfortunately, this is the first time I did anything electrical, so um, the cable management is definitely not um, the strong point in this project. Um, but had to use a couple of bit of breadboards to can talk to certain different things. Um, so that's for the two ICs that I've got in here. And then I've got a, a positive and negative breadboard over the back there for all the positive and negatives. Um, that I've got and then all the other pins go into the boards using DCS uh, BIOS hub um, and I've got two USB ports so they connect um, via the hub system righty -o. so let's just push that back to there 
push this back up. Righty, so let's get into the program. We'll do a ch little test. So fly again. Okay, so let's bring that up there. Go fly there. Okay. Oops, I've got to knock over. Right here, so let's have a look and we'll go straight to the flaps. We'll look at the flaps button. So that's full, half, auto. That works fine. The launch bar. Okay, so I push that down, it goes to retract, which is up in the cockpit. And push it up, it goes down to extend. So I just need to swap those uh, pins around, which won't be a problem. The hook bypass, carrier and field, that's working okay. Anti-skid off and on, that's working okay. Let's go to the formation lights. That's working okay. I'll leave them up there. Position lights, if you can see that over the back there. That's working okay. Radio. Uh, just move to the taxi lights. Taxi light off, on, off, on. That's working okay. And let's see if we can get to the strobe. There's a strobe down there. So dim off and bright, I think, behind the throttle quadrant there. So that's working. Right here, we'll go to oh, stop the plane. Look at our left DDI switch. That's working. Our right DDI switch. And that's working. We go to the HUD switch. Well, that's fine. And AMPCD, that's working okay. Now, there is a problem with this one. That now that it's talking to DCS, it is just constantly talking to DCS. Hence, you get the Auto 8 on there. Um, or depending on what, what brightness you have. Um, so I've just got to put a code in there to stop that from talking all the time and only talk when I when I move the switch. Uh, then we've got the O box down the bottom, so that's off and on. That's working okay. And then the oxygen flow. So that's working fine. Alrighty, we might do the right hand side first and then we'll go to the center so let's get the generator that's working the battery override off and on that's working the right generator and that's fine I just turned uh, something on funny sound coming through I'm not sure what that sound is it sounds like the master arm it's oh, really working okay I hope you can't hear that too much but anyway we'll keep on going okay console lights Panel lights, floodlights, 
warning and caution lights, chart lights. Let's do a light test. It's working okay. We'll then look at the mode lights. That's working okay. Then the FLIR, standby, on, off. That's working okay. Move it off. The LTDR, safe and arm. That's working fine. And the LST button is working fine. Now we'll go to the radar, um, radar panel here. Uh, right, there we go. That's working fine, and the INS. If you want to go to ground, go to ground, back to IFA. There we go. So that's working fine. Right now, let's have a look at the the comms. Now you'll see the comms one channel, uh, which will move and change the comms one display here as it will in the cockpit. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five. And we'll go five, four, three, two, one. And not so sure if you can see it in the um, on the display, but I've got the seven dash dash two seven zero point zero zero on my scratch pad, and then I've got the the GRCV, the SQCH, the Cipher um, AM, and menu buttons with the colons on the on the side. Now let's have a look at comms two. So we'll go again one two three four five. Six, seven, and go back. Six, five, four. Check the push button. So that's working fine. You can see that there. I don't think my comms one push button's working yet, but we'll get that fixed up. Let's check the numpad. So we'll go one, two, three, four, five, six. Clear. And five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Enter. So all the numpads working. And then if we go to uh, check to make sure all these are working. And they're all working fine. Uh, we'll check the AP, the IFF, the TACAN, the ILS, the data link, the beacon, and on off. So they're all good. Right now, let's bring up the HSI waypoint. We want to set a course, say for example, so we'll set a course of let's say one, two, zero from waypoint. So we'll get the course up. I think one, two, zero, enter. Got to stop it first, don't we? There we go, and one, two, type in one, two, zero, enter. That didn't work. Okay. One, two, zero, enter. Right. That's interesting. One, two, zero, enter. I don't know why it didn't work the first time, but working now. And we'll select the heading switch. So again, heading. I guess we can stop it and go one two zero as well. 
and the heading switch switches to 120. We'll look at the HMD, that's working. We'll have a look at the altimeter. Maybe we want to go up to 311. There we go. Down back to 300. There we go. And proximity radar. That's turning the OK. And let's see if we can get the information. So if I go autopilot, I get all the displays and that that come up for autopilot if I kick click it inside the cockpit. Um, IFF and same if I bring up the comms, it's changing the, um, the station select channel as well as the information up here on the scratch pad. Right, yeah, so that's about all. At least there's only some very minor things left to fix up. Um, but thanks for watching, and I will catch you all in the air very soon. Have fun, guys.